On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, Tesla looks like they're planning multiple high passenger vehicles. A popular upgrade option returns on the new Model 3. Tesla sweetens the deal for customers taking delivery here in the stretch run of 2024 and more. What's happening, friends? Ryan McCaffrey alongside Daisy the Boxer, and this is your weekly dose of Tesla news and analysis. It's Ride the Lightning, your weekly Tesla unofficial podcast. This one publishing on November 24th, 2024. It's episode 486. Coming up this week, I want to wish a happy Thanksgiving to all of my American listeners, and uh, perhaps soon, a happy Tesla delivery day to me. If you'll indulge me for just a moment, I know this podcast is not about me. It's about Tesla, and I normally just talk about whatever's going on with me towards the end. But I did want to share with you here at the top that I have ordered my next Tesla, and it's the new Model 3 Performance. I went into great detail on this on this week's Lightning Round episode on Patreon, which I recorded literally as I submitted the order. I clicked the order button on that lightning round, and I released it to the Patreon backers immediately after. But the short version is that, honestly, it was too good a deal to pass up. As much as I love the Cybertruck, and I'm excited about the Cybertruck, the new Model 3 Performance, which I've test-driven twice and been flung around the Tesla Fremont factory test track in once at high speeds, it's, it's a great car, and boy is the deal Really, really, really great right now. It worked out to about $30,000 less for this car than a Cybertruck right now. And on top of that, I got 0% financing that Tesla's offering on the 3s and on the Ys right now, both of which combined to allow me to do a 3-year loan instead of a 5. And like I said, it's it's just such a great car. I mean, I'm now, I've... I mean, I guess I've been biased for six and a half years since I bought my 2018 Model 3 Performance, but everything I've been taking a look at with the new one, the new Model 3 Performance might be the best overall car for the money that Tesla makes. And I know that's something that we could all politely argue around a campfire for for hours on end. And that would be a fun conversation, by the way. Like, what's the best overall car for the money that Tesla makes? I would argue that it might be the Model 3 performance. Now it's only, and I use only in air quotes, the fourth quickest Tesla in terms of both zero to 60 time and quarter mile time. Although I think it actually ties the Cyber Beast for third place in the quarter mile department versus any other Tesla behind the Model S Plaid and the Model X Plaid. 11 seconds flat is the time, but Here's the here's the for the money part. The Model 3 performance is about half the price when equi- when equivalently equipped than those other three performance Teslas, which is just insane that it's about half the price because believe me, I did go on and just even though I knew it was probably not going to be a thing that was realistic for me, I priced out the Plaid in ultra red with white seats and a yoke and uh, FSD, and it was it's half the price. And the X is obviously, the X Plaid's even more money than the S Plaid, although I'm just not particularly in the market for an X right now. And Cyber Beast is $100,000, plus FSD, uh, plus the white interior and the Cyber Wheels. So anyway, after I placed the order for the new Model 3 Performance, I got a VIN instantly, but I didn't want to take delivery of the car until after our Thanksgiving trip that we're leaving for tomorrow morning as I record this. So I used my one-time deferral. And I couldn't help but chuckle later when I thought about this because it's funny how six and a half years ago when I ordered my first Model 3 performance, I had to wait over two then agonizing months 
from the time that I ordered it in May to the time that I took delivery at the very end of July. This time, it was so quick that I had to tell Tesla, wait, pump the brakes. I'm going to hold off for a couple of weeks on this. And in fact, in with the benefit of hindsight, as I sit here on an extremely rainy night to the degree that they're issuing flash flood warnings across San Francisco tonight, if I had taken that first car, my delivery would have been yesterday. I'd have had the car already, but yesterday the weather was pretty bad too, so it would not have been a great day to take delivery weather-wise, and today it would have just sat in the garage because they literally were texting out the emergency service things, alerts on your phone saying, please don't travel unless you absolutely have to. So hopefully whenever my actual delivery day is, it'll be a bit nicer outside. Also a funny coincidence about ordering my second Tesla ever. The first time that I ordered a Tesla back in 2018, I very unexpectedly and delightfully got free supercharging on it after I ordered, but before I took delivery. You know, I, I didn't order the car with that expectation, but by the time I took delivery, it was there. Now, in that case, I was extremely fortunate that it was free lifetime supercharging. And now, fast forward six and a half years, ordering my second Tesla, it's happened again. I am unexpectedly getting free supercharging after I ordered, but before I take delivery. Though in this case, it's not lifetime supercharging, but three months. Still, I will happily take three free months of free supercharging. Uh, so yes, that is not simply, it doesn't just apply to me. That's where we can get into the news for this week and start stop talking about me and get back into talking about the news. Anybody taking delivery of a new Tesla in the US or Canada by the end of the year, December 31st, will get three free months of supercharging and, by the way, three free months of FSD supervised as well. I ordered FSD with mine outright because A, I wanted it, and B, I had to order it to get the free paint color, which would keep me under the tax credit, save me another 7,500. So the, I'm not gonna be benefiting from that, but hopefully many of you will benefit from that three free months of FSD. And that, by the way, does apply to all five currently in production Teslas. The S, the X, the 3, the Y, and the Cybertruck, although there is an asterisk, asterisk pardon me, on the Cybertruck, Canadian Cybertruck buyers do not get this promotion. Only U.S. Cybertruck deliveries are able to take advantage of this. Well, you could probably, I was thinking about this, well, okay, what's the value of this? Is it more of a, more of like a, it sounds good, like feels good in your heart kind of thing, or is there real monetary value to it? Well, you could probably, I would say it's a $500 value. $300 for sure, for three months of FSD. And then, okay, let's call it 200 bucks worth if three free months of free supercharging if you make decent use of that during that three-month unlimited window. So there you go. If you're planning to order, you've got another little temporary perk between those two three-month trials. And if you've already ordered, like me, and you're just waiting to take delivery, well, good news. You're going to get something that you didn't expect to get. So good stuff there from Tesla pulling a demand lever here as the end of the year, the end of the quarter gets closer. Now, I mentioned a few minutes ago that my family and I are, are heading away for a Thanksgiving trip. I will note, as always, there will be an episode of Ride the Lightning this week, as there always is, as there has been for 486 now consecutive weeks. But I'll just let you know in advance that, as you probably already guessed, it won't be the usual news and analysis format that I do most weeks. It's going to be an interview with a former Tesla employee that I recorded ahead of time a few weeks ago, and I hope you'll enjoy it. And as always, I welcome your feedback. So take a listen to that next week at the, at the regular time. Uh, although Patreon backers will get it much, much earlier because why not just release it to Patreon backers who, who uh, are kind enough to support me there. I'll get it out to them earlier than usual. But yeah. Feel free to drop me a line after you've had a chance to listen to that interview next week, and hopefully you enjoy it. And if you don't, let me know if you don't like those kind of episodes of something else that you might want to see uh, instead for those rare times that I do step away with my family. 
And while we're still on the subject of those new incentives, by the way, a quick reminder that the referral program is back. It's continuing. So in addition to the three free months of FSD and three free months of supercharging, you can get $500 off of a three or a Y if you order with a referral link or $1,000 off of a Cybertruck S or X. Just make sure that you place the order with a referral link. Tesla will not retroactively apply it if you don't. So if you'd like to use my referral link, the thing to do is type this into any web browser on a desktop or mobile device. It's ts.la slash Ryan73014. And I'll put that link in the episode description as well. By the way, I mentioned the Patreon a minute ago in this week's lightning round bonus mini episode that I do every week for that $10 and up tier on Patreon. Uh, if you would like to join the Patreon, it is the holiday season, so maybe you're thinking, oh, yeah, right, right, Ryan, I've, I've been listening all year, I've been digging it. If you want to support the podcast on Patreon, I'd be very humbled and grateful if you would consider that. You can go to patreon.com slash tesla podcast for more information including all of the support tiers it's now ad free at every tier you'll get an ad free episode you'll get early access to each week's episode and if you go to that ten dollar tier or higher you'll get those things and those weekly lightning round mini episodes as well there's over 120 of them and i've also just activated a new promotion patreon just set this up so i i went ahead and turned it on there is currently, I'm currently running an offer for 20% off your first month of supporting on Patreon. Uh, if you So if you'd like to join up, there's a 20% off your first month. Use the promo code 2645F, as in Frank, or Ferrari, whatever, or whatever F word you prefer. 2645F is the promo code to get 20% off your first month of supporting me on Patreon. All right, let's get to our main headline story for this week. It sounds like Tesla might have another high passenger vehicle or two or three, maybe, on the drawing board. Someone posted at Elon on X this past week saying, quote, please make a Tesla big enough for my family. And the gentleman included a photo of his family and his family is nine people. To which Elon replied, quote, Tesla Robovan is in development, some other things too, end quote. So not a lot to go off of there, but nevertheless, Elon offering something that he didn't necessarily have to in that particular response, then given the fact that he chose to respond to it at all. So the Robovan, we can start there. Now the Robovan, or Robovan, as Elon likes to say jokingly, is probably quite far off, which... I know I already talked about extensively on the RoboTaxi event recap episode from after I was lucky enough to attend that event. So that, I mean, that was my takeaway on it, at least. That's who, I don't actually know, but that was, that was my takeaway. So I wonder if there might be a Tesla, a high passenger Tesla with user inputs, meaning a steering wheel and pedals, that say the size of a large passenger van? that could be in the works because the Robovan, just in case you couldn't quite tell on the live stream, it's enormous. It is absolutely gargantuan. It's not, it's not something that I think any regular person would own. I mean, it's the size of a small bus. It seats 20 people, but maybe Tesla is working on something like say a 10 passenger van which, you know, could also have commercial use if you remove the seats. As a familiar personal example, my uncle in New Jersey, he has a van for his aluminum siding and window installation business that's set up exactly like this. I've ridden in that van many times when going to visit him. It's only got the two front seats. He took all everything else behind it out. And then the back of the van is all shelving and space for windows and siding and tools. Well, as I've said many times, if Tesla's battery day goal from 2020, so it's, it's been a little over four years now, is still to get to 20 million vehicles made per year by 2030, they're going to need to get into not just one or two, but a number more vehicle segments. 
I mean, heck, they're gonna need to do that just to get halfway to that goal. I know I've talked about that a lot too, of how if 20 million seems crazy, well, maybe it is, but even if they only, heavy air quotes again, get to 10 million a year by 2030, that'll still be absolutely incredible considering they're doing 2 million per year now. So 2 million or so now a year, and if the Model 2.5 lineup, which I predict will be two cars, adds another four to five million per year, that's still, to bring back the air quotes, only six or seven million cars a year. Cybercab is probably gonna be urban use only, I would suspect, probably not a lot of rural folks, and there are plenty of people who live in rural areas in the US. Uh, but cyber cabs, there, there's only going to be so many of those because anybody outside of a city, I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of demand for the cyber cab. So I'm not sure what the production ceiling on cyber cab might be, but I think you get my point here. And so a passenger van that's half the size of the robo van and has a steering wheel and pedals, I think makes a lot of sense in order for Tesla to help get where it wants to go from a production volume standpoint. Although, if I'm being honest, in terms of really moving the needle production-wise, and thus in the transition the world to sustainable energy as quickly as possible sense as well, a minivan would seem to be the bigger market segment to tackle first. I mean, both are great, don't get me wrong, both are needed, both have a distinct useful purpose, but a minivan to me would seem like a higher priority. Now, amazingly, nobody in the US has made an EV minivan yet, uh, or nothing that's for sale in the US market, let me put it that way. Unless you wanna count the new Volkswagen ID Buzz as a minivan, which I've watched a few videos on. I watched Marquez Brownlee's video on it. I watched uh, Jason Camisa's video on Haggerty about it with friend of the podcast, Randy Popst, featuring heavily in that one. And the ID Buzz, I mean, it, it does have three rows. It does have sliding doors, so maybe it counts. Although I'm not so sure that Volkswagen would necessarily want it marketed that way, but I don't know. But uh, there is one, actually speaking of Marquez, at this, this week as I recorded, he had a really interesting video on his autofocus channel, which I really enjoy. It's all about cars about a, he had a, he got to borrow an imported EV minivan from China called, I believe it's, I don't remember the model, but it's, the brand is Li, L-I. And it's a uh, completely electric, just super luxurious minivan that was with very distinct styling. It was pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I imagine the odds of it coming to the US are fairly low because it seems like uh, there's going to be a, a tariff situation that's going to really pump the brakes on on uh, on Chinese EVs coming into the U.S., which, you know, that's that's a whole other topic. Maybe that'll be good for the domestic EV industry. We'll see. But anyway, the point being that nobody in this market has made a compelling or really forget about even a compelling, just any EV minivan at all. I mean, if Toyota weren't so frustratingly anti-EV, I think Toyota could clean up in the market by making a 300 mile range Sienna EV minivan. People, I'm not a minivan guy, but I've heard plenty of friends and relatives and just, people love the Sienna. People love that thing. An EV version of it would do great. But anyway, I digress. Elon did say, some other things, plural. So hopefully one of those things is a minivan and one of them is a larger passenger van. Well, I was curious to know what kind of high passenger vehicle that you'd like to see. Forget about what I think. What do you think? So I made it the subject of this week's Patreon poll. The question was simply, what high passenger vehicle would you like Tesla to make first? Thank you to everybody that took the time to vote in this one. In fact, I'll shout out, it was Mark Richards 
on Patreon in response to this poll who actually linked me to that Marquez Brownlee aforementioned video about the Lee Chinese EV minivan. Uh, 36%, the winning vote, the winning response in this week's Patreon poll was in fact, I want a Tesla minivan. 36% of the vote. 29% said, I want a three row SUV with at least eight seats. So that's that's a rather telling response too, I think. Uh, 18% of you just voted other or just show me the results. And then 12% of you said, I want a full-size Tesla van that will seat eight to 10 passengers or more. And I threw this in because I thought some of you might want to vote for this. Turns out only 6% of you chose this, but 6% said, I want the six seat Cybertruck with the fold down middle seat like the prototype had. Thank you again to everybody that took the time to vote in this week's Patreon poll. And there will not be a Patreon poll this coming week as I'm away on vacation and the pod, the uh, next week's podcast is already locked and loaded uh, and set to go for you guys. But typically, every week, typically on Tuesday evenings, I put up a new Patreon poll at Tesla. Excuse me, teslapodcast.com. Uh, oh boy, let me try that again. Uh, I clearly am ready for a vacation. Patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. There we go. Third time's the charm on that URL. You can stop by patreon.com slash Tesla podcast to vote in the poll each week. You do not have to be supporting me in any way on Patreon in order to vote in the poll. That is free and available to anybody who stops by. Next up this week, Tesla has launched a long-awaited upgrade for owners of the new Model 3 long-range all-wheel drive as they've brought back Acceleration Boost as an optional software upgrade that you can grab through the app. Now, so far, this story comes via Drive Tesla Canada. That's who I saw reporting on this first. They write, so far the upgrade is only available in Asia and Australia, but we expect it to be released in North America soon. According to Tesla, the acceleration boost will lower your zero to 100 kilometer per hour time from the stock 4.4 seconds. And again, this is specifically the Model 3 long range dual motor, the all wheel drive Model 3 long range. From the stock 4.4 seconds to 3.8 seconds, a significant improvement. For comparison, the Model 3 performance has a zero to 100 kilometer time of 3.1 seconds. Again, remember, uh, 100 kilometers per hour translates to 62 miles per hour. That's where the discrepancy comes from there. So you can also, that means you can shave a little bit off of the acceleration boost figures that I'm giving you. Anyway, getting back to Drive Tesla Canada's notes here. Uh, the acceleration boost, boost gets you close to the stats of the top of the line Model 3 performance at a much lower price. As for the price, so far we have seen the Acceleration Boost upgrade be available in China, Taiwan, and Australia. In each of those countries, it is priced at the equivalent of around $1,900, $1,900 US. As for when Acceleration Boost will be available in North America, according to one of our sources, the upgrade was supposed to appear in China in September, but was delayed till November for unknown reasons. A North American release was supposed to happen just a few weeks after that, so we should hopefully see acceleration boost in Canada and the U.S. before the end of the month. And, and even if it doesn't end up being November end of the month, hopefully sometime before the end of the year here at some point in December. Well, my reaction to this is simply, yes, I am thrilled that this is back. It's such a fun upgrade. I mean, I was bummed when the, the, the three fresh didn't launch with it, but my guess, as I, as I think I said at the time, is I suspect that Tesla wanted to validate everything on the new version of the car with real world miles before going ahead and offering an uncork for more performance out of those motors. In other words, I think they wanted to make sure that they got a whole ton of fleet data to show that the motors were holding up as reliably as they expected they would. And now, after about a year on the market, and if you're wondering, wait, a year? No, it, it is actually globally it's a year, just not here in the US. It launched in Europe and Asia last October 
We didn't get it here in North America until January. But it seems that that moment of confidence in the fleet data for Tesla has arrived. So if the price stays where it was before on the previous generation Model 3, I think it's a great option for somebody that wants, and especially when you can buy the car knowing this, like if you haven't already purchased your Model 3 and you plan to buy a 3 fresh, well now you have a more informed decision that you can make. It's like, do you just go all out, get the performance, or do you go with the long range dual motor and then do the software unlock for the acceleration boost after you take delivery of the car? Because it is it is potentially a great move for somebody that wants that more affordable, long-range all-wheel drive, but then wants to get a little bit more zip out of it without paying full price all the way for the full-blown Model 3 performance. Now, granted, if you go that route, you don't get the spoiler, you don't get the aluminum pedals or the McCaffrey metal pedals. Shout out to anybody that knows the reference I'm talking about right there. And yes, that is a real reference. I am not making a joke. Uh, the performance bucket seats, you don't get the larger brake calipers, the 20 inch forged wheels, you don't get the unique front fascia or the unique rear diffuser, but you do get to choose 18 inch or 19 inch wheels on that long range all wheel drive with your acceleration boost that will get you a whole heck of a lot more range than a proper, or at least a noticeable amount more range than the proper 303 mile Model 3 performance does, whose tires, by the way, will not last as long as the 18s or the 19s and will cost you more to replace when you do have to replace those 20 inch Model 3 performance tires. And just again, what a great thing to be able to dial up for those of you that have already bought the 3 Fresh in long range all wheel drive form. You want to make it go noticeably quicker by about half a second to, zero, to 60 miles an hour and you want to do that instantly? Well, guess what? Now you can. It's easy money for Tesla and I think it'll make plenty of customers very happy. Now, I guess plenty is somewhat relative because I can't imagine that the take rate on this upgrade is that high because a lot of people that are really dead set on the extra performance, people like me, are just gonna buy the performance model. And then there's a whole much larger swath of other people that will find the, the 4.4 seconds of the regular long range all wheel drive to be plenty darn quick enough on its own. So I, I, I imagine the pool of buyers for this might be somewhat small. 4.2 seconds, by the way, is the zero to 60 miles per hour number versus that 4.4 number uh, off off the, the factory floor for the zero to 100 kilometers per hour. So I think you're gonna be going down to 3.7 seconds on the acceleration boosted long range all wheel drive Model 3, which fun fact, just for a little historical perspective here, 3.7 seconds was the same zero to 60 that the original Tesla Roadster Sport version had. The Sport came just a little bit later. It had a tighter hand-wound stator in the motor and it eked just a little more performance. The stock original Roadster was zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds and the Roadster Sport could do it in 3.7. And now, and that car, by the way, if the Roadster Sport was a hundred and, oh, I don't quite remember. I want to say $30,000. I believe it was one thirty. dollars Don't quote me on that. And now, 15 or so years later, you can get a, a Tesla that does 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds for, let's see here, if we take, well, even now, all right, with the tax credit, sure, why not? Let's see, so 35, 37 grand. So we've come a long way. We've come a long, long way uh, in, in every way, shape, and form in the world of Tesla. But, but anyway, anyway, again, this is, this is free money for Tesla and for the folks out there that are interested in this, it couldn't be easier. And really, 
Any spouses out there who think that their partner might like this in their new Model 3 long-range all-wheel drive, all I'm saying is that this would make a pretty awesome holiday gift to surprise them with. Just saying. Let me take a quick little pause in this week's Tesla news to remind you once again about the just relaunched Climate Exchange Raffle. The new version of it, year nine for this thing. If you wanna win any Tesla configured however you want, and yes, that includes the Cybertruck, you wanna do that for just $250 and have your raffle entry go to a great cause as well? Well, absolutely, that sounds like a good idea. If that is of interest, the Climate Exchange Raffle, which you may remember all of you helped raise money for last year, is back for its ninth year and proceeds benefit a small nonprofit doing really important work for our planet by working hard to help states pass climate policies. Even better, if you win, Climate Exchange also pays all of the fees and taxes on the car, meaning you get your dream Tesla with no out-of-pocket cost. That is the most bang for your buck of any EV raffle on the internet. Here's further proof of that, by the way. There's also an early bird drawing of $10,000 cash that's being held on January 3rd, 2025. And even if you were to win that, you're still eligible for that grand prize drawing that's occurring on February 28th. And even better than that, Climate Exchange is giving away two additional cash prizes, $12,500 for their second place winner and $7,500 for their third place winner during their February drawing. Last year's winner picked out a red Model X plaid, nice, fully customized with a yoke and FSD, and I'm told he's living his best life driving it down in Florida. Now, Tickets for this have sold out early just about every year, so don't wait. Get yours today. Go to carbonraffle.org slash RTL to get your tickets and start daydreaming about how you'll configure your dream Tesla. Or to make it even easier, just click the link in the episode description. That's C-A-R-B-O-N-R-A-F-F-L-E dot O-R-G slash RTL. And of course... A thank you to my friends at Accelerate Auto for continuing to offer this Ride the Lightning listener discount on their X-Care extended warranty option available for your Tesla. It's super flexible. You can do two years and 25,000 more miles, which is mirroring what Tesla offers, and that's the only thing that Tesla themselves offers. You can go more. I've got a three-year, 40,000-mile plan on my 2018 Model 3 Performance. Or you can go all the way up to another 10 years and another 125,000 miles after your factory warranty is up. This can also be purchased for any Tesla, no matter where you bought it. You don't have to have bought the car new from Tesla. And they match, and they not only match everything that Tesla does, meaning a $100 deductible and 24 7 roadside assistance, but XCare also offers rental reimbursement and trip interruption coverage which is awesome. So whatever plan you're thinking of, and by the way, that might include, you could just do a battery and drivetrain plan if you want, or you could add a battery and drivetrain plan onto the regular, the rest of the extended warranty, and just have the whole darn car head to toe covered. So whatever you wanna do, check them out, accelerateauto.com slash xcare, that's X C E L. E-R-A-T-E-A-U-T-O dot com slash X-C-A-R-E. And by the way, that discount code I mentioned at the top here, it's Lightning. The discount code to give you $100 off your policy purchase is Lightning. I've still got plenty more Tesla news to talk to you about, so let's resume. The Tesla charging team continues to push hard to make long distance travel in an EV quicker and more convenient for all of us. The team made a new post on X this week that was titled, improving charging for all. And I'm gonna read you the whole post. They said, we opened the supercharger network to be helpful to all EV drivers and car manufacturers going electric. However, different charge port locations on other EVs aren't great when charging on a shorter cable supercharger. Below are our recent efforts to continuously improve the charging experience for all drivers. So here's what they're up to. Making stall availability more accurate than ever. 
The latest Tesla software update improves the accuracy of stall availability estimates. We can detect when another EV with a charge port located somewhere other than the rear left or front right is plugged into a short cable supercharger stall. This update ensures no more over-promising of stall availability so you can travel with confidence. We will continually refine this algorithm to be as accurate as possible, including exact site mapping and faster refreshing of stall availability. And then the next one, increasing number of long cables. Longer cables mean that V4 posts can serve all port locations. In the next 18 months, we will have more long cable than short cable superchargers. Modifying our sites to avoid blocked spaces. Tesla says we have modified over 1,500 sites so that drivers never have to use more than two charging spaces to charge, increasing stall availability for all. And then the next one, the final one, encouraging the best charge port locations. Since opening up the supercharger network in Europe in 2021, we've encouraged car manufacturers to transition charge port locations to rear left or front right. This provides seamless compatibility with 30,000 plus short cable superchargers available to other EVs globally. Well, my first thought here was, wait, did they rehire the entire supercharging team that was laid off? Because this team is crushing it as if they didn't just lose a ton of people earlier this year. I mean, I just got done talking about the V4 cabinets and the 500 kilowatt charging, peak charging for Cybertruck, and now this? Now second, and more seriously, what jumped out at me from this was the long cable note. So if they're going to have more long cable than short cable superchargers in the next 18 months, does that mean we are about to get an absolute avalanche of V4 stalls opening up all over the place around the world? I mean, it sure sounds like it, and that's gonna be awesome. Not just for Tesla owners, although especially for Tesla owners, but for every EV. I mean, this is just cool stuff going on with this team right now. I will say I'd also love to know more details about how they modified some of these 1,500 sites to make them more straightforward to use for non-Teslas with charge ports that are somewhere besides that rear left or front right of the car without taking up to, you know, modifying those sites so that they, those cars don't take up as many parking spaces. But that aside, man, I just love that this team, to me, what this says is they are trying to stay ahead of the imminent wave. I mean, sure, other EVs, auto manufacturers, other manufacturers, but really it's staying ahead of the imminent giant wave of Model 2.5s starting next year. I mean, sure, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of Teslas on the road now, but demand for supercharging is going to ramp up significantly once those cheaper Teslas hit the streets in big numbers over the course of next year. As an aside, I would love to see this same kind of stay ahead of the curve effort on the service center side of things, but that's neither here nor there as it pertains to this discussion. And I know there are other challenges with that. You can't just put a service center somewhere where you think there are gonna be customers. There have to be customers there first. Anyway, uh, the point is charging infrastructure, at least in my opinion, is one of, if not the number one mental barrier for a lot of people to get over, to have to clear, in order to be willing to adopt EVs. And so these kinds of efforts from the Tesla charging team, I say kudos to that team for making this huge, very aggressive push to make supercharging more widespread and just easier for both Teslas and other EVs alike. Two more stories. Here's the penultimate one. Uh, it's a take from the head of a major battery company, really the major battery company, that, in my humble opinion, could age like milk. In a conversation earlier this year, 
CATL chairman Robin Zhang told Elon Musk that the cylindrical 4680 battery is, quote, going to fail and never be successful, according to a report from Reuters this past week. I saw this written up on Tesla Rati, and here's a quote from Zhang who said, We had a very big debate, and I showed him. He was silent. He doesn't know how to make a battery. It's about electrochemistry. He's good for the chips, the software, the hardware, the mechanical things, end quote. And then uh, Tesla Rati notes, in September, Tesla announced that it had produced its 100 million 4680 battery cell at Gigafactory Texas after reaching 50 million units in June. The company is also in the process of expanding its Gigafactory Nevada to add a dedicated 4680 cell production facility expected to ramp up to 500 gigawatt hours in the long term. The report also highlights a licensing deal Tesla has with CATL for technology related to producing batteries in Nevada, expected to officially launch in 2025, according to a person with knowledge of the matter who spoke to Reuters under the condition of anonymity. Well, I'll say this, I do give Zhang credit for doubting Elon right to his face, I guess, there's something for that, instead of just chirping from the media, but here's the thing, history says that betting against Elon tends to not end well. And considering, just ask short sellers, and considering that Tesla is already ramping up the dry cathode process for the 4680s that are going into customer cyber trucks now, as far as we're told, I feel like I can already see a few little mold spores starting to grow on Zeng's words right there. I mean, I do acknowledge, again, Zeng is not some nobody. He heads up the world's largest EV battery maker. So he's got plenty of credibility. I don't, I don't mean to sound like I'm, I'm trying to tear the guy down at all. But speaking as someone who has, whether you think what I do is, is sane or crazy, but as speaking as someone who has watched Tesla and made a podcast about it weekly for over a decade... Well, or about a decade. I've been watching over a decade. The podcast is coming up on a decade. I just think, in all seriousness, I think there is every reason to believe that the 4680 battery cell will absolutely be successful, and I'd be willing to bet an In-N-Out burger lunch on it with Mr. Zhang the next time he comes to San Francisco. The final news story I have this week is specifically about Texas. If you're in Texas, and I, I have looked at my analytics, I know I've got plenty of you listening down there, Tesla has launched an unlimited home charging promo for Tesla buyers in Texas. Another tip of the cap goes to Tesla Rati, who writes, buyers in Texas who take delivery of a Tesla by December 31st and enroll in a Tesla electric fixed plan can now receive a year of unlimited home charging for $5 a month. The fixed electric plan is typically $15 a month per vehicle for unlimited EV charging, while Tesla also offers an electric dynamic plan with $25 a month unlimited EV charging. Quote, get one year of unlimited overnight vehicle charging for $5 a month when taking delivery of a new Tesla and enrolling in Tesla electric fixed plan by December 31st, Tesla says in their post. Tesla's electric plans let the company manage and adjust energy systems in accordance with market changes, or owners can use the Tesla app to facilitate energy flow manually. Those with power walls and solar panels can also sell energy back to the grid at a fixed rate per kilowatt hour or at near market prices for the company's upgrade monthly plan. The fixed plan comes with a 12-month term and a $400 credit per year power wall enrolled in Tesla's virtual power plant program. It also offers fixed per kilowatt hour rates for selling energy back to the grid and discounted electricity rates during low cost hours. The dynamic plan instead offers a $120 credit per year for power wall enrolled in VPPs, month to month contracts, peak rates during high demand events, and the ability to sell energy back to the grid at 90% of the real-time market price. Thank you to Tesla Roddy for the info there. You know, this sounds like a pretty sweet deal for Texas residents, particularly if you've already got solar and Powerwall. 
Now, I do confess, I don't know the ins and outs of Texas utility companies, but all I know is that unlike other states, Texas's thing is that their grid is not interconnected. And unfortunately, that has meant that when there have been extreme hot or cold weather events there, it has sometimes caused problems that have sometimes made national headlines. But I also know that Texas has recently surged past California and is now tops in the United States in renewable energy production, which is super cool. So for my Texas listeners out there, and again, I know there are a lot of you, if you're taking delivery of a new Tesla before the year ends, this might be worth a look. You can learn more at tesla.com slash tesla dash electric. And that brings us to the end of this week's news block. But stick with me. I'll be right back. I've got your Ride the Lightning phone calls queued up and ready to go right after this. Hi, this is Franz von Holzhausen, and you're listening to Ride the Lightning with Ryan McCaffrey, the Tesla unofficial podcast. Welcome to the Ride the Lightning Hotline. It is your chance to be featured here on the podcast. If you'd like to call in with a Tesla question, comment, or discussion topic, I welcome and invite you to do so. There are two easy ways to do that. Either send in your question using your smartphone's built-in voice recording software. Just record it. Please try to keep it to 90 seconds or less so that I can get to as many people each week as possible. And then email the file to me at my podcast email address, which is teslapodcast at gmail.com. Or you can take that same 90 second or less question and just call in and leave a message on the Ride the Lightning hotline. You can do that anytime, 24 seven. And the toll free number is 1-888-989-8752. Again, that's 1-888-989-TSLA. And if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. Visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. First up this week is Nick from Northeast Ohio with a feature request. Hi, Ryan. This is Nick from Northeast Ohio calling in with a feature request. Um, Just this last few weeks, my frequency in taking my dog with me on the road in my Model Y has greatly increased. I'm a real estate agent, so I show a lot of homes, and many times I'm going to be gone from home for several hours. So I take him with me and occasionally get out, take him for a walk. But one thing that I always do when I'm leaving home is I play relaxing music on the smart speaker inside of our home, just uh, whether it's classical or just something that's chill and helps him relax. Wouldn't it be great if we had a toggle on off feature that could be tied to dog mode. So every time we got out of our Teslas and we turned on dog mode, we would have the ability to default to leaving the radio on or leaving it off. That way that music, that anti-anxiety type of music for our pups could continue to play while climate control and everything else is is going on for them. I just think it's an easy thing to do to add a a button or a toggle onto the settings and just add another feature to our cars that would improve the life of our four-legged friends. But hopefully the right people hear this. And again, thank you so much for the weekly podcast and all you do for the Tesla community. Have a great one. Nick, this is an absolutely great idea. And as you said, it's seemingly an easy thing to do. And I think that even if you were the only person I'd ever heard of that likes to leave calming music on for your dogs when you're not at home, this would still be a great idea. Except that I've heard that from many, many people. Lots of people do that, which makes this an even better idea that I 1000% hope Tesla adds in the very near future. Great call here, Nick. Thank you very much for this call. Next up is Jason from Texas with a supercharger question. Hey, Ryan, it's Jason from Texas. So six months ago, Elon fired the supercharger team and then rehired a few of them. Have we heard what is uh, happening with any of the supercharger sites that were under construction during that time period? The location in Lorena, Texas was mostly done and seemed to just be waiting for activation. And since then, it's just been sitting there and kind of mocking us. I called Tesla and uh, did get to speak to a person, but got a non-answer. 
So do you know if there's anywhere online to get status on these or otherwise make sure they don't fall through the cracks? Uh, please give some pets to your uh, Daisy the Boxer and mine of the service dog for me, and you have a great evening. Jason, I wish I had a better answer for you, but unfortunately there aren't a lot of great resources for this, and as far as I know, none from Tesla officially. However, I do have two suggestions for you. Supercharge.info, which is a community-driven website that appears to be very up-to-date and shows the status of what I presume from looking at the site, and I've looked at this site in the past before too, what I presume to be just about every active supercharger project in development. So check that out when you get a chance. Supercharge.info, not supercharger, supercharge.info. And then if you happen to have an X account, you could also follow Marco RPI1. That's the guy that I mention on the podcast sometimes because to his credit, he is the most eagle-eyed person that I know of in the Tesla community when it comes to tracking and discovering new tes- new like permitted supercharging sites. He digs through the permits, he finds all that info that's hidden in plain sight. So I hope one of those two suggestions you find helpful. Thank you for your call. Bill from Wisconsin is next, responding to the topic last week about V4 superchargers and the cabinet upgrade and their ability to charge 800 volt architecture cars. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Ryan, it's Bill from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, with something serious this week instead of just screwing around. Uh, so, talking about the new V4 superchargers and their ability to charge 800 volt architecture cars, and you were listing reasons why you didn't think that upcoming vehicles would use that system. The one thing that I think shouldn't be overlooked is the whole reason they went from the 12 volt to 48 volt accessory voltage is because it allowed them to cut down on the amount of copper required to make the vehicles. Well, if you went from 400 volt to 800 volt as the high voltage system, wouldn't that same principle hold true? And if what you're talking about doing with the version 2. Model, model 2.5 is to cut the cost of manufacturing, wouldn't you want to cut down the amount of copper you're putting in that vehicle to cut down the cost of manufacturing? I'm, I'm not a Tesla engineer either. I did have an electrical engineering minor in college, so I do have a little insight into this, but I'm just looking at, at their rationale for what they did with Cybertruck and the 48-volt system. Why not apply that exact same thinking when you're looking at this new architecture? Just saying. That's all I had to say. Uh, pass on my best of wishes to uh, Daisy and Mina, the future service dog. Talk to you soon. You make a great point, Bill, and I really honestly appreciate you calling in to point it out. You're absolutely right. And in fact, you've now given me a lot more optimism that maybe the Model 2.5 cars, after all, will maybe ship with that higher octane architecture and thus possibly be able to charge at a peak rate of 500 kilowatts. Although, I do genuinely wonder if having an LFP battery pack, as I do reasonably, I won't say uh, with any expert knowledge, but it does seem like there's a very good chance that the Model 2.5 cars are going to have LFPs, but I wonder if those LFP packs might still limit the max supercharging rate somewhere well below 500 kilowatts, but you're you're totally on point with, uh, with your call there. So thank you very much for adding a little more information to my brain that it was missing before. Adam from Southern Maryland is up next. Hey, Ryan, this is Adam from Southern Maryland. I've got a 2024 Model 3 long range dual motor with 12.5.6.3. I uh, recently got that update a couple weeks ago, and previous to that, I had no real issues with the auto shift out of park. Uh, but since that update, I've had it consistently choosing the wrong direction to shift 
when I'm parked near my garage door. Now, it's a white garage door. I don't know if that has any impact to it. But as I uh, hit the brake pedal beforehand, it would consistently pick to go forward. And now with the new software update, it's trying to back right up into my garage door. Uh, so I've completely disabled the auto shift uh, out of park beta in the dynamic submenu. Um, I don't know if this is just limited to my car, but I want to throw it out there to the rest of the community. And hopefully if there's any Tesla engineers listening, uh, that there's a pretty significant flaw because it worked great previous software and now it's not. So uh, just everyone out there, beware uh, and trust, but verify your auto shift out of park. And uh, thanks for all you do. Love the podcast and uh, take care. Hi, Adam. Well, I can't imagine it's limited to you since it had been working great on the last FSD version for you. I mean, this I've definitely seen this happen with other things. Auto wipers would be a big one. They got really bad for a while, but at least in my experience, don't seem to quite be as annoying now. Tesla seems to have kind of walked that back, fixed it a little bit. A again, at least in my experience. I, I'll say I haven't had a lot of phantom dry wipes of the windshield wipers for no reason on a sunny day in quite a while, whereas for quite some time, they were haunting me in an extremely frustrating way. Unfortunately, this is how it seems to go in software development sometimes, not that I'm any sort of software engineer, but it becomes a bit of a game of whack-a-mole, right? That's not to dismiss the issue, certainly, and I don't blame you for just going ahead and disabling that feature for now. Hopefully, Tesla gets it back to good on the next software release, and I'm happy to help try and speak it into existence here on the podcast, just in case that might help. Uh, speaking of auto wipers, by the way, here's Andrew from Australia. Hi, Ryan. Andrew from Wollongong, New South Wales, Australia here. Just a quick question about auto wipers. Um, we have this problem with the software that we have here in Australia where we get dry wiping often from auto wipers. I'm just wondering with the FSD stack whether that's improved. Uh, as you know, we don't have FSD in Australia at the moment. So yeah, I'd be interested to know whether the, uh, the software's improved in that area so we can have something to look forward to. Thanks, bye. This is a tough question, Andrew. I mean, I don't quite know what state they're in for you. Obviously, you mentioned that you're getting dry wiping, which, as I was just talking about, was was plaguing us here in the U.S. for a while, too. But it has gotten better, as I was just saying. It, and, and at times, it seems like it's it'll take two steps forward, one step back, or two steps back and one step forward, depending on the software version. But overall, I guess I, I would pretty confidently say that they're better, but if I'm being completely honest and fair, I, I would say they're, in my opinion, still not where they should be. And where they should be, to be clear, is never wiping when they're not supposed to, just like on any other car that has a built-in rain sensor on it. So that's the standard uh, that I'm thinking of here. So, uh, Andrew, I hope that helps. Thank you very much for your call. Thank you to everybody that kindly took the time to call in. I promise I will, well, actually, next week's podcast, there are not phone calls. It's a, I'll just warn you now, it's, it's, a, it's a big, long conversation with that former Tesla employee. But if you want to respond to something that you heard on this week's podcast or from another caller on this week, you are welcome to call in, and I will get to those phone calls when I get back from my trip here on episode 488, and I gave you the two easy call-in methods at the top of this segment. But I am not done yet. We come now to the Spirit of Adventure portion of the podcast. And obviously what's going on with me and my car is prepping for the new car. Um, and by the way, what's, what's been going on with the prep is, well, the old one needed a wash and uh, the new one needed a car cover. Or the, excuse me, the old one needs a car cover for when it's going to start to live outside. So I got the car cover. Haven't actually tried it on yet. But when I washed the Spirit of Adventure last weekend, the hose that's attached to the pressure washer that goes out to the actual, like, squirt gun part, it, which it had been kind of kinked for a while because that's, I guess, just what happens to these things after they get twisted around after so many uses. But unfortunately, that hose actually suffered a breach and started squirting water out. So that was a shame to have to to have to uh, 
be done with that with that power washer because it was otherwise fine. I mean, I, I guess I can't be too mad. It did last me about, well, six plus years and I was thinking about it. It, it has been hundreds of washes that I've done with that thing. So I ended up going to wirecutter.com and I grabbed their top recommendation. Which, if you're curious, if you're in the market for a power washer for your car, is a Ryobi 2500 PSI power washer. And I'll say this, it sure looks heavier duty than my broken one. I mean, it is higher PSI. And it better be because it cost a good bit more than my old one did. And one thing I looked at on the new one before I clicked the buy button was the hose. And this one looks like it might not get kinked up and, and suffer the same fate that the last one did. So we'll see. I mean, maybe I overspent on this and it's overkill for what I need to wash the car. But as long as it works and works well and works reliably and for a while, I'll be happy. The first time I use it, the way things are going right now could end up being on the new car, which, by the way, I still have not come up with a good name for. I gotta, I gotta work on that. I'm gonna have to think about that on my trip. Just open up my Word doc, and yes, you guys know me, I'm crazy enough. I have a Word doc where I keep ide a list of ideas of car names. So the thing is, I'd been working on a lot of Cybertruck names, and I had a few Model 3, because you know, the Model, this Model 3 performance pivot didn't come out of nowhere. It's been, it's been brewing in my brain for a while. Uh, which which Patreon backers know because I've I've done a Patreon lightning round about that, but yeah I gotta I gotta come up with a new name or a a good name for the new car. What, I mean maybe just the new Spirit of Adventure, but that seems a little a little not trying hard enough on my part. So we'll see. But um, so yeah we'll see if the first time that I end up using this new pressure washer is on the new car or not, but maybe not because as soon as I get it, or at least as soon as, as soon as Immaculate Reflections can squeeze me in on the schedule, I am taking it straight in for the deluxe treatment that I always mention to all of you guys at the end of the podcast that I, I very much recommend, which is paint correction, full paint protection film on the whole car, and ceramic coating. And I'm going to get that done as soon as possible once, uh, once the new Model 3 performance arrives. I've got an enter entertainment recommendation for you this week. It is a video game, and that game is Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. This is a, a first-person shooter slash survival game, science fiction. It's for Xbox Series X and S as well as PC. It's also available on Game Pass. I've just been getting into that. That is, uh, that is some good stuff so far. Also out this week on Game Pass, for those of you that are playing on PC or Series X and S. This game is not for me, but it's the people that play it and the people that are into it love it. The last one IGN gave a 10 out of 10 review to. And so the new Microsoft Flight Simulator, Flight Simulator 2024 is out this week as well for those of you who love aviation. How about a Tesla Pro Tip of the Week? It comes from Dave in Virginia who adds on to Pete's recent pro tip about tapping the park button twice to unlock the doors. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Ryan, it's Dave from Yorktown, Virginia. I want to add on to Pete from Perth's pro tip uh, involving pressing the park button twice in order to unlock the doors. Uh, there's another way to do that, uh, and that is to go into your general settings, uh, the control panel, Pick the locks section, and then if you scroll down to the bottom of that locks section, uh, there is a button that allows you to choose unlock on park. So if you choose that, obviously, you don't need to double click. That's the setting that my wife and I use all the time, and uh, there you go. So have a great day, and uh, really enjoy your podcast. So long. This is a great follow-up tip here, Dave. Thank you so much. And by the way, if anybody else has a Tesla Pro Tip of the Week that you'd like to share with me and your fellow Tesla owners and enthusiasts, please share it. And you can do that by just sending it in like you send in a regular Ride the Lightning Hotline phone call, which I told you how to do a little earlier in the podcast. 
Okay. Before I hit the road, as as always, at this point of the show, I want to mention some friends of Ride the Lightning that can hopefully be useful to you sooner or later, starting with abstractocean.com. They've got so many great aftermarket Tesla accessories for all five of them. Yes, including the Cybertruck. There's the very popular fourth generation tempered glass screen protectors that use Gorilla Glass, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it's all custom fit, good to go. Highly recommend that. They've got a million different great lighting kits for both the inside and outside of the car. Just a ton of great stuff. My advice is just take a look at some point. You know, you don't have to, obviously you don't have to buy anything. Just go check them out, abstractocean.com. But if you do see anything you like, throw it in your online shopping cart. And when you get to checkout, use the coupon code RTLPODCAST to get 15% off of your first order. That coupon code again is RTL Podcast. That's all one word, no spaces. If you want or need a front license plate on your car uh, through either personal choice or your, your state's regulations, your state laws, I do recommend the Snap Plate or the tougher Snap Plate Plus. This is the front license plate bracket that's a nice, clean, minimalist design. It's nothing bulky, and if you want to take it off, you can totally take it off, and it will leave no unsightly hardware or anything else behind. Unlike the mounting bracket that Tesla gives you with your car, which sticks to the front of your car with automotive tape, so that if you ever want to take it off, it's not going to be pretty with what it leaves behind. So I do recommend the Snap Plate or the Snap Plate Plus if you would like the stronger version that's strength optimized with hardened features for maximum strength. Both have the signature minimalist aesthetic that blends in really nicely with the Tesla front end. Both are made from recycled, made in the USA plastics with stainless steel reinforcements. Get yours at everyamp.com slash RTL. And there's a discount code too, once you get to that website and choose one and put it in your cart, use the coupon code RTL for a nice discount as well. I mentioned Immaculate Reflections a little while ago. I am booked in. I'm on the calendar, provided the car arrives in time, which I guess there's no necessary guarantee because I put my first order on hold and that car has probably been delivered to somebody else by now. So we'll see what happens. But one way or the other, sooner or later, my new Model 3 performance, once it arrives, will be going to Immaculate Reflections And I wholeheartedly recommend that if you've got a car you care about, whether it's a Tesla or something else fun in your garage, that if you're in or going to be in the greater San Francisco Bay Area, that you book in a service appointment, a detailing appointment with Immaculate Reflections, whether you want to do paint correction to get the finish looking as perfect as possible, maybe you want to do paint protection film on the front of the car, where all the highest impact rock chips and stuff are likely to be, or maybe you want to go nuts like me and do the whole car, Uh, perhaps you want to do ceramic coating because waxing a car twice a year to preserve the paint finish is annoying and time-consuming, whereas ceramic coating applied by a professional detailer can last five years or more. Ask me how I know, because the Spirit of Adventure is on six-plus years and it's still going strong with its ceramic coating. So... Anyway, Immaculate Reflections, the website to go to if you'd like to check them out and reach out uh, is irdetailing.com. When you do make contact through irdetailing.com, mention that you're a Ride the Lightning listener, and when you do that, any service that you book in, you'll be graciously extended the Ride the Lightning listener discount. Thank you so much to Jeff at Immaculate Reflections for continuing to offer that to my listeners. Near, uh, near the top of the show, I mentioned my Patreon. I'll mention it one more time here. We are, I guess, pretty much officially into the holiday season. So uh, if you'd like to give the gift of supporting the podcast, I'd be humbled and grateful if you chose to do that. Now, I know you've got a lot of responsibilities, a lot of people to get gifts for. I'm probably at the bottom of the list, and that's quite all right. This is a free podcast. It's here for you, whether you back me on Patreon or not. But if now is the time and you think, you know what? Yes. Ryan, it is time. I'm ready to support you on Patreon. The support tiers start at just five bucks a month. And that $5 will get you ad-free episodes every week and early access to each week's episode as well. 
if you step up to that most popular tier, which is the $10 per month tier, you'll get ad-free, early access, and you'll get access to all of those 120 and counting lightning round mini episodes that I put up on Patreon each week. So all the information where you got to go for the Patreon is patreon.com slash Tesla podcast and Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. There is a link to it in the episode description as well. Follow this podcast if you're not doing so already. And if you do that, which is totally free, by the way, it means that you will be sent a push notification every time there's a new episode, which with this podcast is every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. You can follow Ride the Lightning on Apple Podcasts, on TuneIn, on Spotify, on YouTube Podcasts, uh, and several of those you can get straight natively in your car to most notably Apple Podcasts, which is statistically where most of you get this podcast from. But to find it on there, just search on whatever podcast service, search Ride the Lightning Tesla Podcast, and that should bring it up no problem. Uh, I mentioned the referral program at the top. I'll just hit it one more time here. If you are buying a new Tesla and you don't already have one, meaning you're a first-time Tesla customer, because if you already have one and you're buying one, well, you'll just refer yourself. You'll get a loyalty bonus, the loyalty discount. But if you're a first-time Tesla buyer, make sure to use someone's referral code, referral link, I should say. It's not a code. It's a link. Referral link to order the car. You'll get $500 off of a Model 3 or a Model Y, $1,000 off of a Cybertruck Model S or Model X, my referral link, if you'd like to order through there, is ts.la slash Ryan73014. Finally, you can follow me on X and or on Instagram. I have the same username on both, and that username is dmc underscore Ryan. You can also email me anytime you like. My Tesla podcast email address is simply teslapodcast at gmail.com. Last thing before I go is to say a very sincere hello and thank you to the top tier Patreon backers. These are the folks at the most generous Patreon tiers. Your support is so, so appreciated. My family and I cannot thank you enough for your generosity in supporting this podcast. I will start with the maximum plaid tier as soon as I get, well, not as soon as I get back, but the week after I get back, that first Saturday in December, we're going to do our monthly Zoom hangout for Patreon backers at that maximum plaid tier or higher. Although I'll, I will add that anybody that joins the Patreon at any tier gets a one-time welcome slash thank you invitation to whatever the next Patreon Zoom hangout is. And uh, some of you have definitely taken me up on that. And it's just my way of saying thank you for joining the Patreon. And you can come join us for uh, for a chat. But the Maximum Plaid and higher folks get invited every month. And we always have a great time discussing all things Tesla. Looking forward to chatting with the newest Maximum Plaid backer at the next monthly Patreon Zoom hangout. And his name is Michael Mizrahi. Michael, I hope I've pronounced your last name correctly. If I haven't, please reach out. Let me know and I will get that corrected, because with the last name of McCaffrey, I've definitely heard plenty of butcherings of my last name, admittedly far less often now that Christian McCaffrey is a well-known star NFL player, that if I have to thank him for anything, it's that. It's it's normalizing the, the correct pronunciation of my last name, which I am thankful for, especially he plays locally. He's a, he's a 49er, so... I, I get a lot of people like, oh, do, do you know him? Like, is he your cousin? Like, not that I know of, but uh, if he wants to help me out financially, I certainly wouldn't say no. But yes, anyway, uh, Michael Mizrahi, Michael, welcome to the Maximum Plaid tier. And thank you very much to the rest of the Maximum Plaid backers. Jonathan Wales, Cameron Clark, Daniel Grummer, Seth Capello, Nick and Tony, the Galpin family, Ryan from New York City, Darren Nickel, Kaz Barnes, Brett Libano, Patrick Wisniewski, Gil Cabrera, Todd Badger, Joe Edgel, Kevin Yank, the Tesla Owners Club of San Joaquin Valley, Will Stedman, Justin Perez, Jeremy Harris, Chris Beach, Tom Mills, Corey O'Donnell, Aaron, 
John Cody, Joel Sapp, Paul Casarino, Richard Corley, Chris Osborne, KB, Adam Lavoy, Jason Chalukas, Travis Krenzel, Bruce Otterstein, Tom Behan, Josh Pennington, John from Cream Ridge, New Jersey, Dustin Hart, Derek Finley, Charles Clement, Adam Christie, Damon Klein, Jeff Brown, Jerry Slinger, and Clayton Goodfellow. By the way, Michael, Michael Mizrahi, one more time, I will just let you know, you're not going to hear your name shouted out on next week's episode, because I recorded it already before you had joined the Maximum Plan. So just apologies in advance on that one. Next up, the Roadster in Space tier backers. Big thank you goes out to these folks. Huge thanks to Pete White, Lyle Austin, Steve Radspinner, Fernando Cordero, Lawton from Chicago, Sean Neidig, Neil Weaver, Jackson Wallace, Rolf and Jennifer Evers, Howard Anthony Smith, Victoria Iacoveto, Tesla Hitchhiker 42, Carol Weston, Robert from Near Philly, American Home Contractors, GetAmber.com, Doug Carey, Rav, and Michael Gallo. And last but certainly not least are the grandfathered in plaid level supporters. This this tier of the podcast of the Patreon is officially not a thing anymore, but these very kind and generous folks continue to pledge at that tier. So I will continue to give them all the perks and benefits that they should get at that tier, which includes this weekly shout out at the end of the podcast. So a hello and thank you goes out to George Cassioppo, Logan Willis, Peter Chalet, Eric Randolph, Dory and Steve Guberman, the Tesla Owners Club of Taiwan, Ron Lee, Charlie Gillespie, Jeff Angwin, Chase Cabanillas, the Lydia family, Aaron Altschul, Jared Brown, Jerome Strack, Jamie Dalton, Mike and Barbara from Louisville, Matt Nixon, the Tesla Owners Club of Wisconsin, Ish, not Elon Musk with one more round of air quotes this week, Peter, and the Bear Boys of Colorado. And with that, we have come to the end of Ride the Lightning episode 486. As I said, I am off with the family, with the extended family for this week, and very grateful to get to do that, and I'm very thankful to all of you for allowing me to do that. I hope you'll enjoy the episode that I've already prepared for you. I had a ton of fun recording it, so I do hope you'll enjoy listening to it, and I'll be back, quote-unquote, live with episode 488 uh, once we get into... Well, I guess the next episode is technically December. It's December 1st, but December 8th, the December 8th episode, of course, 488. I'll be back with the usual song and dance that I do here. But for now... Again, to all my American listeners, happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a wonderful time. If any of you are driving your Teslas to go visit family or friends this Thanksgiving, I wish you safe travels and happy and comfortable travels in your cars. And may they may they take good care of you and entertain you along the way. And so on that very note, happy electric motoring, my friends. And I will see you back here next week. Elon Musk, people don't like Elon Musk. The guy founded PayPal and Tesla, and people are like, yeah, but he's a troll and a bad dad. I'm like, so was mine. He did nothing to fight climate change. <laughs> also, have you been in a Tesla? Have you been in a Tesla? My buddy let me drive his Tesla. I laughed out loud at how fast it went. Been clinically depressed my entire life, on dozens of medications, in a Tesla for 13 seconds, cured forever. <laughs> I mean, I think a Tesla is the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. That's what it's meant to be. Our goal is to make... It's, it's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. It's maximum fun.